A long time ago, I released a video on farm animals, but I've learned so much since then and I missed a bunch of important things in that video. So here is my master coop guide. Alrighty, let's get started. Before we talk about the actual animals, let's go over some of the other things that are quite important. Naturally, you need to feed your animals every single day. You can easily harvest hay for them to eat by slicing away at grass on your farm. If you run out of grass on your farm, you can buy some hay at Marnie's Ranch. You can also buy a heater at Marnie's Ranch and you will definitely need a few of these for winter. Once you have reached level 10 farming, you will be able to buy order grabbers for Marnie as well. These things are amazing. You place them in coops and barns and they will automatically harvest all of the animal products for you. That means you don't need to run around picking up eggs anymore. You won't need to shear sheep and you won't even need to milk cows anymore. The auto grabber is an incredible time saver and you should definitely use these to your advantage. Unfortunately, the auto grabber will not work on truffles, so you will still have to harvest those yourself. There is one more amazing machine that you can place in your farm buildings and that is the Autopetter. It is a lot of effort to get one of these but trust me, it's definitely worth it because the Autopetter does two amazing things. First, the auto petter will prevent animals from losing relationship points with you if you forget to pet them. As long as you keep those silos full, your animals will not lose any friendship points, which is great. Secondly, the auto petter will increase your relationship with your animals by a tiny amount every day. What makes this amazing is that this will stack with your manual petting, effectively allowing you to raise your animal friendship faster than without the auto petter. Now onto an interesting question. Should we lock our animals indoors or let them roam free outside of their respective buildings? If your animals eat grass outside of their housing, they will gain a huge amount of happiness and also save you some hay, we should effectively save you some money. So I would recommend letting your animals roam free outside of their buildings. However, you should not give them too much freedom. Place a fence to restrict their movement a little bit. Wood and stone fences will slowly decay over time and you will have to repair these. To solve this problem, you can use tea saplings as fences. These trees can be placed right up against each other and will produce some tea leaves for you at the end of each season. They also don't need to be watered so they will make great fences. I want to quickly talk about farming professions. Usually we pick the tiller profession at level 5 farming to make our crops worth more. But the rancher root actually has an interesting use. If you pick the rancher roots, you will have two options at level 10 farming, coop master and the shepherd profession. Both of these professions each have their own use, but they also have a hidden benefit that is actually not stated in the game. Both of these professions will greatly increase the chances of you finding higher quality animal products from your animals. With any of these professions, you'll find yourself producing much more gold and even iridium quality animal products. Alright, now let's talk about some coop animals. There are currently 5 types of chickens in Stardew Valley. You can only buy white and brown chickens from Marnie and you would usually need at least one of each of these for the community center. You can also get an elusive blue chicken but I will show you how to get the blue chicken in a bit. First we need to talk about chicken eggs. Chickens will produce an egg every single day as long as they ate food the previous day. Once you have reached a certain number of hearts with your chickens, they will start to produce large eggs. Large eggs sell for quite a bit more, but it is always more efficient to turn your eggs into mayonnaise. Even if they are producing iridium eggs, you will still make much more money if you turn your eggs into mayonnaise. Alright, now onto the blue chicken. 
chickens. Blue chickens are actually quite easy to get. All you need to do is befriend Shing. And he's actually quite easy to befriend. Just buy him tons of beer. He loves beer. And we should encourage him to do what he loves, right? When you reach 8 hearts with Shane, you will get a unique cutscene. I won't spoil the cutscene here, but after you have seen that cutscene, there will be a 25% chance that every chicken you buy from Marnie will be blue. Blue chickens are exactly the same as normal chickens. The only difference is that they are blue. <laughs> There are two other types of chickens. First, let's go over Void Chickens. There are currently two ways to get your first Void Egg. First, you will have to be lucky and wait for the witch to fly over one of your coops at night and leave a void egg for you. You can also buy a void egg from Krobus for 5,000 gold. To get a void chicken, you'll have to incubate the void egg and just be patient. Eventually, you will get a void chicken. Every day that your void chicken is fed, you will get another void egg. These eggs are actually quite interesting. Void eggs sell for less than regular eggs, but void mayonnaise sells for more than regular mayonnaise. So definitely turn those void eggs into mayonnaise for some profit. Golden chickens. Now these are hard to get. You can only get a golden chicken by incubating a golden egg. And you can only get a golden egg once you have reached 100% perfection on your save file. This makes golden chickens more of a flex than anything else. Naturally, golden chickens will lay golden eggs. And golden eggs sell for quite a bit of gold. Just a quick tip, if you ever turn golden eggs into mayonnaise, you will lose a bit of gold. Rather just sell those golden eggs as is. Out of curiosity, do you guys have any gold chickens on your farm? And how long did it take you to reach 100% perfection? Okay, okay, this might seem very strange, but I think rabbits are better than sheep. Hear me out, okay? Sheep produce wool, right? Well, rabbits produce wool and rabbits feed. And in the early game, when you don't have any other rabbits yet, you don't have to shear your rabbits because they just drop their wool right there on the floor. Rabbits also produce quite a decent amount of wool. I was actually quite surprised when I checked my order grabber and I have like 800 pieces of wool just sitting there. As an added bonus, if you went the rancher profession route, you will get quite a few iridium quality rabbit's feet. And those things sell for a decent amount of gold. And if you don't want to sell them, almost every villager loves rabbit feet. So they make for great gifts. You can still get some sheep to add diversity to your animal lineup, but I am sticking to rabbits. Now onto dinosaurs. Well, more like baby dinosaurs. With incredible luck and persistence, you can find a dinosaur egg by doing a bunch of different stuff in Stardew Valley. From fishing for treasure chests, hitting artifact spots, or finding a prehistoric floor in the skull cavern. When you do find your first dinosaur egg, make sure to immediately start incubating it so that it can hatch into a baby dinosaur. Finding your first dinosaur egg is quite difficult, but once you have a dinosaur dinosaur of your own, you will continue to get many many more eggs. You will basically have an infinite amount of eggs from that point on. Only after you have a dinosaur of your own should you donate one to the museum. I have made the mistake of donating my first dinosaur egg to the museum and <laughs> yeah. If you have any extra dinosaur eggs, you can turn them into mayonnaise. And if you have the artisan profession, these will sell for 1,100 gold each, making them quite good at money making. Okay, I should probably speak about ducks too. You can buy ducks from Marnie's Ranch and ducks will produce duck eggs. Naturally, you turn duck eggs into mayonnaise. When you turn regular quality duck eggs into duck mayonnaise, you will have an incredible 550% increase in profits. So please do turn your duck eggs into mayonnaise. It is just definitely worth it. Ducks also have a chance of getting you a duck feather. You will need one of these for the community center, but they don't really have any other uses. And that brings us to the end of the video. Hopefully this video was helpful, and if I missed anything, or if you have your own tips and tricks, please drop them in the comments below. Bye for now, I will see you in the next video.